If you've ever come across a jumping spider and thought, mm, that spider's looking at me funny, you're probably right. These spiders are ridiculously smart, and to prove it, I'm gonna make friends with an adorable jumping spider. Today, I'm in Central Florida with my good friend Jack, on the hunt for all sorts of spiders and venomous reptiles. This time of year, we have the off chance of finding something very special, regal jumping spiders, the largest jumping spider in the US. They make their homes deep in the palmettos in this pine flatwood habitat, where they'll be hunting for all sorts of tasty insects. It didn't take long before we had some luck either. Jack called me over to see what has to be the biggest and fuzziest jumping spider I have ever seen. So basically, when I go about handling these things, they're so aware. A lot of spiders don't really have great eyesight, so it kind of makes them easier to handle, if that makes sense. They don't really recognize they're on a hand, or they can't really see where they want to go, so they just kind of aimlessly maybe walk around. Sometimes some can be a little skittish or quick to jump, but these jumping spiders, it's a different story. They can be super aware of being on a human hand, of seeing me, seeing me move and tracking my movements and wanting to get the heck out of there. Fresh out of the container, you can see she's basically tracking my hand. She's watching me, right? She's already kind of understanding in some rudimentary form what's going on here. She's going, uh-oh, I'm in close proximity to potentially a dangerous animal. And the first thing she's gonna go to do is flee. Now, generally what I like to do is let them kind of jump around, walk around and start to get a feel that, oh, I don't think I'm actually in danger. I'm just a little bit confused. And this makes them a lot easier to kind of manage. So you can see I'm kind of letting her have autonomy. I don't want to move too fast because that you see that it just startled her. And now she's going to maybe try and jump away. You see, I moved my head. She spun around to look at me. Super aware spiders. So I like to kind of stay calm. I like to kind of move my hands in a position where if she were to jump, she's got a bit of a platform to go to. And eventually she'll calm down. She'll realize I'm not a threat and uh, she'll be happy to hang out with me for a little bit. Jack's right. These spiders are wicked smart. So while they definitely can be reasoned with, they're also cunning escape artists. If I'm not careful, one of these spiders could jump away and disappear without a trace. I would get my chance to try and tame one of these spiders really soon as I was rooting around in a nearby palmetto. Oh, I got a regal. Yeah? It's not as big as yours, Jack, but uh, it's a cute, oh wow, you're fuzzy. Hi there. What I'm actually gonna do here is uh, I'm gonna see if I can't just take her right off of the palmetto. She's very active. Oh, hi, oh, hi. Oh, is that a threat pose I see? Yeah, mine was kind of doing that a little bit too. This is a wild spider, not a household pet. So they will sometimes act defensively. Let's see if I can't uh, coax her in a container here real quick. Use your spider catching prowess. There we go. And let's uh, get her under control and See if we can get some handling. So this is a totally wild regal jumping spider. And this is like the perfect spot for him. We've we've seen lots of cover webs. Jack found his giant one. And finally, I've got a little one right here because people are always asking me, how do you handle all these spiders without them biting you? And the trick is really just to be patient and watch their behavior. Hi, you. Oh, oh, so for so your first instinct there is to jump off. They're very, very aware spiders. They're called jumping spiders for a reason. Those really insane hydraulics built into their whole body. And uh, they use it to do just that and jump off. Hi, buddy, you're okay. She's just jumping away trying to escape because as far as she knows, I'm a predator. So my goal in this interaction is to try and calm her down and get her to actually sit here and stay in my hand. Right now, she's chilled out a little bit right there. The, the idea is to essentially just be an extension of the spider's environment. This is one of the spiders that I would say you can like kind of reason with a little bit. See those big old eyes right in the front? They have amazing vision. And in order to have amazing vision, you have to have a pretty decent processor inside your brain. These guys can problem solve. You know, I've talked about wolf spiders problem solving before, but these guys have to hunt in three dimensions. They're climbing in all these little palmettos and bushes and stuff, having to calculate where their prey is and how to move in three dimensions to actually subdue it. If they didn't have that ability, 
they wouldn't be able to eat, they wouldn't be able to secure food, and they wouldn't survive to reproduce, and frankly, they wouldn't be around. Now, I always say you don't really need to pick up spiders. I only do this for presentation and demonstration purposes, and occasionally if I need to relocate one that's in a place where it's not gonna be very, very safe. The more I kind of work with this spider, and I'm calm and collected, even, even just not talking too loud is a trick that I use to keep them sort of calm, but they feel that vibration and it can make them feel threatened. But uh, we don't wanna threaten her. Look at how cute she is. Big old eyes, that chunky, kind of blocky appearance. Jumping spiders are one of my favorite animals in the entire world because they're just so darn adorable. And with that fuzzy little face, they are just darling creatures that I cannot get enough of. And frankly, I don't I don't film enough jumping spiders here on the channel. I've been I've been so busy with with widows and rattlesnakes that sometimes I forget to stop and smell the roses with some cute and cuddly creatures as well. Look at her just exploring around. Now she's calmed down. Like I said, this is a spider you can actually kind of reason with. As far as she's aware now, I'm just a nice tall vantage point she can use to look for more bugs. And since the mosquitoes are kind of annoying out here, she might even get some bugs while she's walking around on my hands. Yes, yes, we'll give you some food. You get yummies and we get less mosquitoes. <laughs> We're looking around. I love how they twiddle their little petty palps. They almost look like a, a, a feathery mustache or something. But all those hairs are not just to make them look cute. They actually serve an amazing purpose. See, I always love to talk about how the appearance of these animals can give us hints to their biology. And those hairs are actually really sensory. It's how they pick up vibrations and understand their world. I would argue it's a very different experience to be a jumping spider than it is to be a human because where we just, we just have hair to kind of keep us warm, their hairs serve as an extension of their nervous system. Every single one of those fine little pieces of fuzz acts as a sensor, picking up information from its environment and informing her about where prey is, where predators are, what the wind direction is, so she can make these calculations to do 3D hunting in real time. Absolutely fantastic, amazing, marvelous creatures, and one of my favorite little secrets of the natural world. Wow, look at you just walking over my hand. They're immensely curious. I, I, this is a wild spider right here. I've been working with her for less than five minutes, and she is already comfortable and confident, and I dare say, even my little friend. Hi, buddy. Aren't you just adorable? Oh, I love these spiders. These spiders are a lot smarter than we give them credit for, and so are a lot of different creatures that we share our planet with. That's why I always say that if we're actually willing to ask questions and take a closer look, the more secrets we're gonna discover and the more rich and fascinating our world actually becomes. All around us, we're surrounded by a secret world just teeming with unusual life, and jumping spiders are not the only intelligent invertebrate that might be lurking in your backyard. The praying mantis is also ridiculously smart, but they can be a bit hard to find. If you'd like to try your hand at getting up close and personal with an amazing praying mantis in your yard or local area, check out this video right here. I break down all the techniques that I would use if I wanted to find a praying mantis. So hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.